so let's talk about some of the stuff that you've incorporated here. 3D printers. Why do we we bought two or we have three? We have three three different styles or we have three different printers. So talk about styles. what we use them for in house and how we can use them for the customer, like samples and right. talk about some of the stuff you've done and what we do do. Okay. Do. So originally the reason why we um, got this uh, technology was so that we could turn around uh, samples, particularly of plastic, uh, plastic parts that would normally, would mean we'd have to spend five or six grand on a small mold, mold. just to see if If it was concept, feasible. Right, yeah. You know, yeah, right, right. Uh, so we started off with a, a simple tabletop uh, uh, extruder style 3D printer something that you'll see, you can go down to Kmart mm -hmm. or whatever and, mm -hmm. and buy these. But then we stepped it up, right? Right. So we then went into what's called an SLA uh, style. What's SLA? Uh, stereolithography. That's the material? Um, well, it's that's the process. Oh, okay. So most 3D printers that people see and the ones that you can like buy, mm -hmm. buy in, uh, out in the stores use a plastic filament and there's a head that basically melts the plastic and it's sort of like a dot matrix printer and mm -hmm. it just sort mm -hmm. of builds up the mm -hmm. layers. Um, they're decent. Their limitation is their, the resolution just isn't the, the resolution that we need here. Especially so the not, specs, the measurements. The, right. You so just can't hold the tolerances. Uh, right. You can't do fine detail in okay. your tolerances. So the SLA. SLA. Um, is designed you can have features that are measured down in thousands Hundreds, thousands right really you know plus or minus two thousands whatever uh tolerances so what how it doesn't melt the plastic how does it no so sla it's like a resin or something right it? so there's a, a a tank of resin that sort of looks like ink or, or paint um the tank has a, a clear plastic uh bottom there's a laser unit that's underneath it. You have a build platform that sinks itself down into the resin mm -hmm. and it will bring itself down to whatever the layer thickness of whatever you're printing. So 50 thousandths, 25 thousandths, whatever. The program will take whatever you're trying to print, slice it up into a hundred or a couple of thousand layers. And what the laser will do is trace out uh, a layer, one layer at a time, shining up through the resin and when it hits it it instantaneously hardens it really but when the laser hits it right really right so it will go through it will uh trace out one uh layer the printer itself will then uh since it's both hardening to whatever you've already printed but it's also hardening to the bottom of the tray it sort of has to peel everything off the tray uh, the tray is made out of extremely non-stick material the the head will recenter itself uh put an old la layer of resin and then it will do the next layer so what it looks like if you sped it up it looks like you'll see a platform root uh, rising out of the goo <laughs> with the uh, with the part <laughs> dangling underneath it yeah i got it but you can do extreme. what do we use it for well this is uh the holders for us our SOC connectors yeah. we now make uh through this method. We used to have these uh, either metal uh, metal molded. We used to just plane them out or whatever at this machine shop. Right. The difference between the metal one and this one is just consistency right. or? Right, uh, yeah. the machining, we were having problems with the, the consistency of the machining. Um, just replicating the process over and over. Right, and we were sort of stuck with uh, making modifications to it there's only so much you can do with a molded part because it's not solid there's a there has to be voids and stuff so that the oh. wall thicknesses would be the right size oh. so one of the things uh that we can do that you know our competition really can't do with their soc connectors if you uh have a uh, splicer that uh is capable of taking the, the, the removable clamp, holders right yeah the clamps holders. yeah we can make a custom 
Yeah, I know we've used you guys. I've used them for a couple because you get these oddball machines, and they want to use our SOCs, and you guys have made right. them. So what, that would be impossible, probably, or a lot harder doing it the machine shop way. Right, it's almost impossible to do it in the machine shop. But with this, since all all I need is computer with SolidWorks on it, you send me the the, the, the splicer. I take a few key measurements, measurements, and I can design up the holder in SolidWorks, right. port it over to the 3D printer. Three or four hours later, I have a sample to test, and even if I have to make a little tweak, tweak yeah, yeah, you can try it out. Two tweak hours it. later, I have, you know, and you just can't do that, you know, machining. It would yeah. take a couple of weeks.